Just doing a little meditation. I'm just doing a little bit of meditation here with my boy, Namaste. Mitchell Rose. Ready? Hit it on Mitchell Rose. This is Mitchell Rose, guys. Look into that camera, Mitch. Beautiful. Excellent. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I'm your host, Blake. Um, that's loud. I'm your host, Blake, and this is uh, your content factory. We are the foundation of your content creation. Thank you for joining us this fine day, wherever you are in the world, wherever you sit currently uh, in a chair, uh, on a stool. Mitch, what are the places people could be sitting right now? Well, I mean, my first thoughts go straight to the couch. Couch. The couch, Dude, as couch. the Canadians would say. They call it cooch. The couch. <laughs> the couch. These Canadians are just sitting on couches. <laughs> couches. <laughs> No big goofing with coaches. Oh, man. Where, Where else? else can people sit? They could sit... Uh, on the ground? On the ground, like, on a on a pillow. They could sit... On the toilet. On the toilet, yeah. they could sit. That's... Yep. I mean, that's a very common social media consumption location is the porcelain throne. Yep. The porcelain that's throne. That's how you know, you know, that's where your audience with is. With or without a squatty potty. Yeah. Um, depending, you know depending on how in touch with your Neanderthal are you, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you honor the ancient ways that our ancestors use their bowels, probably have a squatty potty. Yep. But if you're like, you know, when I was out camping this weekend, dude, that was like, I mean, shitting in the fucking wilderness is actually game changing. Cause I was like, this is the way it's meant to be. This is the way. Dig a fucking hole and just let it rip. Yeah. Or but, just let it rip. <laughs> I just, just let it rip. <laughs> You don't got to dig a hole, man. No, no. Yeah, you just kick some leaves on it. Kick some leaves. Yeah. Fucking let, landmine. Uh, let nature do its thing, you know? Like, that could be a tree. <laughs> it could be. I mean, you could the fertilizer it, it needs. Exactly. Nutrients. It's all one big circle. Yep. Native American stuff, man. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome uh, to your content factory. I love having Mitch on. We, we do another podcast called Authentic Identity with uh, Jared Everett. And so we're just always goofing off, dude. It's like goofing. I think that's like super important too for professional areas and environment as well. I want to kind of unpack how you can maintain like this approachability and like, uh, I don't know what to call it yet. So, but like when you and I met, it was in a professional setting uh, with the JKR Windows crew and you were the film guy. And, um, it's there's a certain level of professionalism in, in that type of environment. And I felt like when you and I connected, we we're like, we can goof off here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we can achieve a level of, you know, uh, satirical, you know, what do you want? What do you want to call it? I don't know. Some satirical, uh, back and forth. We can just some play. It's a play. Yeah. We could just hang. And it yeah. was, it was fun, dude. We were always just cracking jokes and yeah. You know, in the middle of like serious, you know, yeah. life changing sales motivational speeches and yeah. like, you know, good stuff. Blake is great at bringing the light into the fun, the fun and the light into a situation. That's oh. what it's always been fun. Oh, well, thanks, dude. Being around you. Yeah. Well, same, dude. It's good to have uh, people to bounce it off of that reciprocate and to feel like it's cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for this podcast, it's a little different than our other one. Um, we're kind of loosey goosey on that. We get, we get deep though. Uh, but this one is more, professional based as, as, as professional as, as I can be, which is kind of a joke in and of itself. Like, <laughs> you know, even at my most professional stages of life, I'm kitted up. I got weapons on me. I'm with a team. I'm in the military, whatever. Dude, I, I, I could not help myself from cracking the most ill-timed jokes ever. <laughs> so I feel you. That's a, it's like merged into my professional. It's like attached to my skin, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, so anyway, but this is a lot more professional than that. It's a it's deep diving on content creation. It's deep diving on content, like consistency of content and making processes around that content. And nobody does it better than Mitch Rose in the state of Utah. I think state. I'm going to say whole state. Thanks, bro. I'm sick of confining us, us Southerners down to the Southern part of Utah. Yeah. I think we have more weight to our words like... You know, we compete with Salt Lake all the time in certain aspects. And I think media, I don't think anybody in the state is doing what you're doing. Right. And that's the cool thing about media content and stuff is like, there's so many ways to bake this motherfucking cake. Yeah. There's so I, many cakes to be baked. 
and uh, your cake has been pretty dope. Like it's like a six story double decker. Yeah, action figures are chocolate, on it. Chocolate, pumpkin, pumpkin. Cake. What else is in there? What carrot else is in cake. cakes? Carrot cakes. Fucking some <laughs> filling in there. Yeah. Chocolate filling, dude. Uh, but I agree. I like as yeah. far as like diverse amount of content. Like I, I truly couldn't tell you how many other people in Salt Lake were doing it. I don't say that relevant, I guess, or not relevant, but involved in like what's yeah. going on up there. I try. That's actually one of my my attempts is to try to stay so uninvolved with what everyone else is doing because I almost don't want it to like because it you, naturally you might to might just start comparing and comparing about this or what's what are they doing and it's it's not a bad thing to see what other people are doing and get inspiration from it but I've watched and noticed myself sometimes scrolling on social media and I'm like fuck I really don't like the feeling I get right now while yeah. I'm doing like while I'm scrolling and consuming. And so I think that's a really important part is to just like switch the switch over from like the consuming and then just constantly produce and just stay like, I don't know, in my lane. Yeah. And like yeah. everybody's going to do their own thing. Dude, and like you just nailed it. I, I, uh, I, like I said, in, in this state of Utah, obviously other people are doing this, but I don't know who they are, <laughs> yeah. but like, I do have a pretty diversely spread of uh, people who can pay me and it's real estate, it's business owners, you know, I never get really weddings and stuff, which we could talk on why I don't focus on that. But as far as just like diversifying my own portfolio of ways people can pay me, like that's, um, I I'm really not sure how many people, like most people niche down, like they're like, I do weddings, I do commercial work. Or I do real estate, or I do whatever else it is in the industry, yeah. right? And I just try to Very be like, niche down, I can right? do fucking everything, and not only do it myself, but find people who can help me do it. You right. know, like I'm, I feel like my superpower is to negotiate a deal and set expectations and tell people what it's going to look like and paint the picture, and then like it's up to me to go either do it myself or find people that can help me do it. So like that's that's been it's getting more clear and clear what my job and responsibility will be in my company so yeah like your most impactful actions yeah dude you're like bob ross you're just painting pictures out there have you ever heard my sales analogy to that mm -mm. i was telling all the directors at jkr all the closers i'm like guys you're fucking bob ross like when you get in there you got to put that that random ass tree in the painting and you got to tell them that it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> you paint it. And then when they see the full picture, it's like the beautiful fucking tree. Man. Beautiful fucking tree. <laughs> yeah. Teardrop. Like, oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. You're Bob Ross. You're yeah. Bob Ross in it. So like you're finding your most impactful <clears throat> actions. And let me, let me backtrack too, just for the audience. So we can kind of talk about who you are, but I do want to unpack this. You, you mentioned comparing and kind of staying isolated, ignoring what other people are doing, which in this industry is really easy to compare yourself to other people. Oh, yeah. So I think most industries, but especially social media, because it's right there. But uh, just to give the audience an idea, like Mitch Rose, uh, how old are you again? 24. 24. Uh, a young entrepreneur running your own videography company that does it all and bringing in multiple six figures, I hear whispers on the wind. Right, mm -hmm. couple, yeah, because mm -hmm. we we all know each other. Mm -hmm. But you're bringing in some some cheddar, some mm -hmm. dough, uh, all the ingredients to make a pizza. You're bringing in those, and yep. it's impressive, dude. And no one in town does it better. You're highly recommended. Everybody, everybody recommends you. And you've kind of cornered these multiple niches. You're not just niche down to one. You got a couple. Mm -hmm. So you've been growing like crazy, doing the thing. Uh, not only that, you like live a cool life. And you got some style, dude, some Thanks, swagger bro. out swagger. there. So that's kind of who Mitch Rose is. Uh, he's become a professional very quickly um, and has a very, very good skill set in this space. <clears throat> so that's why you're here, because we could talk about it. Hell yeah. Um, but real quick, it says here, um, I did some research on you, okay? Um, so you're, uh, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you're a videographer. I looked you up on IMDb. It said... No results found. So you're not an actor. <laughs> why is not that? Not yet. I'm fucking working on it, man. Why Why is that? Well, dude, <laughs> I, I've 
me and Sam for nobody or for the people who don't know, Sam is my girlfriend, but she hates me and loves me at the same time because <laughs> me and Blake have very similar personalities of the fact that like she can say something and that immediately triggers a full movie scene in my head. Uh -huh, and I immediately yes. start talking in that voice or acting in that, yeah. whoever that character is. And it's so out of left field, like she gets it. And a lot of other people who've been around me get it, but it's like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> exactly. But like, I'll, I'll snap into a character and I'm like, just playing the character. And she's like, yeah. Mitch, what? Like, you gotta but like I'm like, the scene, dude. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, dude. You think like a videographer. Yeah, I do. You can picture I'm a visionary. It. You can picture how you're going to frame it. Yep. And it's a completely hypothetical situation. Like I could bring up something about like Batman holding a banana and you're like. Play off of that. Gotham. You know, like yeah. he's like eating a banana. Like we could, we could paint that picture too. That's Bob yeah. Rossin, dude. Bob Ross. We're painting. But I was like, yeah. I was thinking about it. I'm like, dude, I need to be, I feel like at some point in my life, I need to be a fucking actor. You do. You I think need to that? work on it? Yeah, I really. I think that I'd, I would passionately like to act. Yeah, and like again, though, like I want to be the the Adam Sandler, the Will Ferrell. Like they they play themselves. Obviously, they have yeah. a role to play, but like they are themselves in that. Yeah. Right. But it's just like channeling your voice, like finding your voice, but just playing into it. Like whatever yeah. character I need to be, like I can fucking play it. Yeah. But like that, that would be so interesting if I could have somebody look from an outsider perspective, like who does acting or coaching coaches actors and see where that, like where they think I would be a fit. You know what I mean? Like, Dude, we is it the serious something. role? Is it the comedy role? Is it maybe, you know, like what, what character can I play that would like make it? In, uh, you want to do a short film? Should we make a short film? We should do a short film. But I'm passionate about it, dude. I've always yeah. thought, I'm like, dude, I could fucking do this. I know I could do you it. Could. You could. You just got to sell yeah. the shit out of it and just be yourself, authentic, you know? And What's funny is I've thought the same thing. I'm like, I could I could do stand-up comedy. I could do... Uh, I don't know if I could do stand-up, but if I... I mean, if I was rolling and I had a fat J-ski, you, you, might, you might get me going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you got a fat J-ski, you could do a lot of things. Yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Yeah, so they. I felt a, a similar pull. I'm like, I, I could do that. I could. It doesn't. I, I don't know if I like need it. You know, it's not like calling to me in the middle of the night. But like, it would be funny to do. To I could play a character, mm -hmm. right? I've, I've already started like doing voice narration kind of stuff yeah. just for fun. No, the same same thing. Just yep. throwing up some accents and, yep. and goofing around. But um, I love creating story. I love writing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I'm with you, dude. We should do a short film. I'm in. We should do it. Oh, is that your foot yeah, there? Sorry, we played dude, footsie. Huh? It's kind of hot. <laughs> um, so the, I, I, the, what's funny is I didn't even know you felt that way. I just thought looking you up on IMDb would be a funny joke. <laughs> just be like, you are not on there. Oh, the lines, bro. You <laughs> yeah. said that for a reason, didn't you? IMDb. I was like, that would be a, just a kind of a funny. I looked you up on this. I looked you up on, you know, Farmers Only. <laughs> You're not there. <laughs> farmers Only, dude. I love yeah. it. Imagine being at a job interview and being like, we checked your farmers only and uh, we don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I always make the farmers only dot com oh, joke. Man. Yeah, do you? I do. Yeah. It's Quite a good a bit, jingle actually. too. It is. You don't have to be lonely at, at farmers only dot com. Got to remember it. Thanks for our sponsoring. Thanks for sponsoring the uh, Your Content Factory. If you're a farmer and you're lonely, you don't have to be. Farmersonly.com. Yeah. Are, are you a farmer? <laughs> no. <laughs> I am not. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway. shit. Well, we could go on for hours like this. This is the danger. So if you're liking uh, this, if we're making you giggle, uh, come check out Authentic Identity with us and Jared. And we're just smoking stogies mm -hmm. in the garage, having a mm -hmm. fun time. But uh, we had a really good guest on there, too. Shout out to Ryan. That was awesome. Can't so for that. <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me unpack your process. For those interested in content creation... Um, actually we'll, we'll come back to your process. Cause I want to hit something you said. So comparing and like staying, you're, you're kind of like ignoring the competition, right? I think that's important for every industry. If you're, if you're actually getting traction, you have to kind of like shut off, but <laughs> how many times has someone told you how to run your business? Would you say? Hmm. Not a lot. Not that a lot. People have told me, I mean, I've, Jefferson has been a, a pretty good 
influence, I guess, on like just backboarding ideas off of. But generally speaking, like all the actions and stuff and like specifics, I've just fi- kind of figured out um, from my from my understanding. I think I've just made those decisions myself. But like like the solopreneur hmm. idea or person that I've been for the longest time, right. Jefferson has very or has, has definitely impacted like that. Right. Like knowing like, okay, let me shift my focus. And this is not the long-term play of this is not going to get me where I, I want quote unquote, like financially right? or uh, just long-term. Like, I don't want to be in the weeds working 24 seven all the time for just X amount, you know, like the only way to scale is to have a team. And so that concept, I guess, Jeff has constantly right. pushed and pushed and pushed. Like, when are you going to hire? When are you going to hire? When are you going to hire? Uh-huh. And so that has has probably been like the only thing that's like been an outside perspective that's like changing it, you know, or telling yeah. me, not necessarily telling me what I need to do, but kind of. That's interesting. Would you say, have a lot of people like come to you with like advice in the form of you should you should be doing, you should, mm, you should. Maybe just like people who have no fucking idea of like what's right a, in the space or you should look into that or, you know, they're just trying to be helpful. Right. You know, um, yeah, there's kind of like, like maybe line. those people, but not like from like a legitimate, like, oh dude, this would be a, this would be a gangster idea. Like I had one person give me the idea to start making like retirement home videos, like going to oh. the elders and, uh, not, watching not the them religious just... elders, the actual elders. <laughs> yeah. Um, just watching them just ace no, well, the, the, the shuffleboard, just nails. <laughs> well, like basically making like for these families, and that this is still an idea I can totally get go for. <sighs> so don't fucking steal it, whoever's listening. Jeez, steal it. Stop. Steal it. Don't. Steal it. Just kidding. <laughs> don't. That's the thing. Dude. There's, there's elders and people dying and old people everywhere. So there's plenty of this idea for anybody. Mm-hmm. But if you're just starting out as a videographer, here's a good idea. Um, getting in with like retirement homes and basically finding like the families who put their old people in the retirement home and then basically just Q&A the shit out of them on like, how was your life? Like basically paint a really cool narrative of their life and then B-roll the, the whole thing of them just doing their thing at their retirement home, looking Dude, out the window, great. you know, serious. <laughs> and maybe you can get a little serious, a little sad, a little funny, whoever that person is. Some panning. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and basically action. tell tell yeah. a tell a story of their life to where like the the families can always watch that video to just remember that's, you dope, know, like dude. a sentimental value package. That's to the consumer. Mm-hmm. Like people would love to just fucking hear their, that special someone's voice again or see them yes. talk again. And like, what a better way to do it than like in that old age where they, you know, remember them, like hopefully they're not too far gone, but yeah. While know, they're good. Yeah. While they're still that's a great alive idea, and talking dude. and conscious, um, that would be, you know, you could sell twenty five hundred bucks and oh, totally. Just sell. We thought about doing the same people. thing. Just getting grandpa in here on these mics and having yeah. him tell the stories of yeah. how he's storms. documenting life. Yeah, you know, but it's people would kill to have that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we've had a similar idea, but I, the rest home thing, dude. Like you could just that could be an advertisement for the rest home. Mm-hmm. If I'm looking for a place to put dad, yep. you know, in his in his age, and he needs help, and you know, because that it's it's a rough situation for a lot of people. Um, and I see a video that you made, you know, and, and Steve and Marlene are out there just cracking the shuffleboard, dude, just yep. boom, sniping, mm-hmm. you know, and then Jerry and Tom are just, just checkmating, <laughs> boom, flicks the, fucking- yeah, <laughs> you know, and then you're watching at the, you know, the, uh, the rest home, like social event where Bernice spiked the punch bowl and like everybody's getting down. Yep. Like flapper <laughs> style, dude, you know, you just highlight all of that. I can see it. Yep. Highlight reel. But yeah. I don't know who the, who it was right. that, uh, gave me that idea, but I was like, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Do you but, ever feel like you have to like defend your methods from people that like might see you like, oh, let me tell you how it is. Like how much are you defending your methods or at, at justifying? Any? Yeah, like today, you you have a really good process down, really great product, really good service. So it's probably easier for the, for you to set the expectations. 
but at any point, was there a time where like people were like, mm, nah, like well, I even had it this way. I even had, um, like, I think this is what will answer your question. Like I had a recent inquiry where I did some trade with a guy who did some on my house and, uh, his wife was starting like a new company. And so I, they were like, oh, we need content. We need help. Like, we'd like to use some of this trade to go towards this serve, you know, to get some content done. And, uh, I don't even know what they were expecting. Like the, the husband follows me and he's like, dude, you're crushing it. You're all over the place, man. Things are going great. Whatever. He's like all, you know, he knows what yeah. I'm doing. And, uh, but I'm not sure what their expectation was. And then we were just talking about what their problem was. And I was just kind of mapping out like, okay, here's, uh, you know, I had, they, they basically are starting from nothing. Like they have zero income coming in from this. So it's like, you know, forking up cash that whatever else it is that you do. So I don't even know what they make, what they work, do for work, all that. And, uh, and so I put together a package, sent it over. It was like 2,100 bucks. And I was like, if you need to, you know, we can break it up, do three payments, like whatever was going to make it easy for you. Um, but I was like, this is what I think will be the most beneficial, like in your current stage and uh, just the basics. And they responded and said like, oh, I'm not sure. I don't want to, let me look at this exact text. Cause it just happened like yesterday. It was like, uh. See, this, we're giving real shit this here, is guys. Real, I was about to say that. This is really good it, stuff. Here was the response. Uh, yeah, that's definitely higher than we were shooting for. Trying to justify that amount for the deliverables is the biggest hang up at the moment because uh, she's just getting started. Um, that being said, is there anything we can do to work to bring the price down or get more value out of that cost? That's uh, what he said. More value out of that cost. So now... It becomes a value thing. He doesn't think that the deliverables or the time spent on the project is worth that price. Um, and then he said, we definitely want to try to work something out because we love your content. It just needs to be a good fit because she's at ground zero. And so I took off a couple things and basically brought the price down to like $1,245. So basically cut it in half. So you, said, you didn't really bring your price down. I I. No, and you, you brought, never do. You brought the deliverables down. I'm not going to fucking, especially for like, yeah. it's always the cheap people who would be like, well, can we get this for more? Or like, can you do the same exact thing for 3000 but do it for 1500 instead? It's like, no. no, because this is the way I fucking have my pricing set up. But if you want something for 1500 this is what I can give you, yeah. you know? And so it's as far as like justifying or like preaching, like I didn't have to, I don't need to vouch you either believe in it or you don't and like if you can't understand what some of these videos can do for you you know maybe i can paint that picture of okay well what's your product product cost what's your um what is your take home after expenses all that stuff and then say well we need to sell x amount to get x right to justify paying for this video yeah um so like i could paint the picture better but again going back to like if they don't believe in their product and they if they don't believe in what they're selling, then it's going to be a hard, hard yeah. thing to even get them to to believe in like the video aspect. So, um, or the value in it. So it's it's kind of one of those things where you That's, gotta you gotta put those feelers out there to see like how serious is this person about their business? Like, is this something they can spend the money on? You know, even I can go back and say, well, what you were expecting is what you said. So what were you expecting? what or what you were shooting for well, what, what budget you? is that because if you give me that budget i'll just make a new plan right based around that budget yeah, how's that right sound because and then if it becomes a well i don't know well now you're lying to me because you told me you can spend x and you want to get x result from getting videos and now you're lying yeah so like again there's just you got to do all these like prospecting questions to really vet somebody out to make sure they're fucking serious and dude you're, you're a sales guy like right. i have no sales experience at all. I've never read a book about sales or anything. So I'm like just going based off of my experiences that I've had. And yeah. I have to have like almost like a pre-qualifying or like a funnel to kind of vet people out, like oh, yeah. give them prices up front, see how they react to it. If they get spooked by it and totally. go MIA, you know? Yeah. So every, every good business has that, right? It's yeah. everybody's selling something, whether you've read a sales book or not, you're an excellent salesman. Thanks. Yeah, because that's how your business thrives. So uh, the businesses that don't thrive, they don't 
understand those things. Um, even if they, you know, you don't have to read a book on it. You know, there's plenty of people to talk to. There's plenty. It, Mitch has the ability from what I've seen. You can go into something, learn something once, and then you never let it happen again to you. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> also another thing too, for this whole thing to happen, your confidence levels are through the roof, bro. Yep. I just got off a coaching call too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cause I'm, I'm starting to do coaching for videographers and photographers, That's so cool. business owners who are doing stuff around media <laughs> and, one of the, we, we were just doing a kickoff call and I was just kind of doing a discovery. Like, what's your confidence level? I asked him just in life. Well, in life or when I'm selling like a, a service for an X amount of price, it's around a seven, but doing these higher ticket ones, he's like, I'm at a three. And I was like, well, there's your problem. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I asked him a series of questions and kind of looked at his confidence level and his mindset about what he's doing. And he's just not convicted enough. And yeah. that's like the biggest part is if you if you can't be confident in what you're selling, then you're, you're not going to sell it to anybody because if you don't believe it, they, they won't know. believe you. They'll they smell can it. smell bullshit from a mile away. It's just the facts. And like, I know better because I've done this over and over and over again to where like my prices is what I stand by. Nobody shakes me from it. Who says you need a better cost than that guy, right? Like it's, it's, here's my pricing. Here's what the value does. Like I know the value in it because I've seen it and I've done it for myself. So either you you're with me or without me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, you got to do your best to like educate people if they don't know what they're getting and how that can look for their business. Like I just, uh, closed a pool company or closing a pool company, um, for like, I think it's like 1800 bucks a month. So it's, it's nothing crazy, but that's like management and content. We'll, we'll batch shoot for like three months worth of shit. But like, again, he could spend a whole year of $2,000 a month on me. And that's $24,000. If he sells one or gets one inquiry from one of our posts, one of our ads, one of our anything that pays for the whole fucking year. And you just built a whole, you know, yeah. brand around it, better content, better credibility, mm -hmm. like all that shit. Like that's how you justify a cost. Now it's nice when you have a high ticket product, like a pool, right? Like whatever they're, say they sell a pool for 75 and they, their margins 40 or 30. I don't know what it is, but like, that's, that's kind of how you paint a picture for somebody is like, Hey, well, what are they selling? Yeah. You know, like for the people who are just the hobbyists and want to get into podcasting, like we had talked about one time, um, what is it that you're selling and what is it that you're trying to achieve? Because if you're not selling a product, don't expect to get a dollar return. You know, exactly. or like have a goal and what, what your plan is, if you're going to try to get some money out of this and what does that look like? And then paint the picture, right. but set the expectations. Like, dude, you're just, you're just paying, you're investing in this to build a brand. You're investing in this to, you know, whatever build an audience. Yeah. Build an audience and, and an audience, right? Like in a podcasting sense, an audience equals attention Correct. and attention equals money in the social media realm in this world. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with your business. You're selling attention. You're highlighting and giving attention to a real estate property, to a pool company, to whatever. And your skill set and your equipment and your team grabs attention and gives it to people, right? So, hey, we'll give you 1800 bucks a month or whatever it is, right? And you help us package this so we capture attention. Correct. And, and capture yeah. and retain. That's another thing Ooh, going on to retain. why you should invest in long-term social media. It's, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. You find people, you get their attention, you get them to follow your account for whatever reason. What is that? Yeah. What, why would somebody want to follow a pool company? Well, you can entertain them about this awesome pool and show how badass it is. You yeah. can inform them about why this pool is so different and special than other things. You can educate them about how the process looks, right? You can, because again, they want a pool. They want a pool, that's why they followed you, Yeah. right? But you need to provide free value and by doing some of those things, inspiring them to go out and get a pool, right? Yeah. You can do one of those content pillars inspire them, bring them in. But then it's like, you got to hit them with that message over and over and over and over because they might not buy on the first video or the first ad, but then you hit them with a, a success story about why the process was so cool that Jerry said, oh my gosh, my pool is life-changing. I got laid and I got pool, laid dude. that night. My <laughs> wife, she's never, you know, suntanned with her tits out until we got this pool. <laughs> you know, this is amazing. 
right? Yeah. Well, I want my tit to I, suntan with her tits out. Now like, all the it. girls love me. Now everybody loves me. The neighbors coming over. Yeah, it's crazy. But no, like hit him with that success story. <laughs> the or pool boy really likes my wife a lot. <laughs> it's been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he gives me the biggest tips. He yeah. pays me actually to come yeah, clean my yeah, pool. Yeah. We're making money off of this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, hit him with that message over and over again to where again it might be the seventh time, it might be the twentieth time they see a post, but then they're like, "I'm ready to," because you know they're ready to buy, but they don't know who they want to buy from yet. Yeah. If that's if that's what the the reason for following you is, and then okay, well, why wouldn't they be ready to buy? They don't trust you. They don't know you. They don't like you. So how can you do that? Well, we need to create content that gets people to know us and like us and trust us, and then they can buy from us. Dude, and so it's really simple. And that's how you play the social media game. Absolutely. I've done it on my phone. I got fucking screenshots. Every time I get a DM, I've been screenshotting them, screenshotting them so I can show people, like, look at these success stories. Like, people yeah. message me through my my social media. Why is that? Yeah. Well, it's because I nurture them. I give them free value. You know, yeah, they so. you, you entertain people, right? Because your 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 pages are very aesthetically entertaining, right? You got cool drone shots, you got awesome stuff. It's you, uh, you know, man in the van. You're out there doing your shit, doing your thing, mm -hmm. and it's entertaining and it's funny, and you have a mustache and it's branding, like, and your style is unique. I feel like you're. That's why we brought you into the uh, the podcast, Authentic Identity, because we just jive with yeah. everybody and yeah. And we, we're looking for authenticity and, and people can smell that. Like I was telling you, it's probably the most measurable yeah. frequency yep. in a human. There's studies on that. We'll talk about that later on the yeah. other podcast. But so you're, you're really good at building that brand. But uh, what I admire about you most, dude, is like your confidence level and the ability to stick to your guns. If this was a Western dude, you'd be Billy the fucking kid. Fucking um, right. Butch Cassidy. Fucking right. Sticking to them Cassidy, guns, dude. dude. Hell yeah. Um, and so we're, we, we admire you. I've learned a lot from Mitch just from watching you structure your business. And like, you know, I, I have, I've had a lot of confidence. I have a lot of confidence in other areas of my life and sales. But um, coming in to work full time with Mal, like it's, uh, it kind of shook our confidence a little bit when I, because we just committed, you know, the fear can sometimes get you. Yep. Because when you go from making, you know, I was on track to make over close to 300K this year with Jefferson plus, you know, um, and it was just ex escalating upwards. And so Mal and I said, hey, you know, the money's great, cool. But like, what if we could make that money in a couple of years on our own terms? And I didn't have to travel six months out of the year, right? Mm -hmm. So we dive in and uh, it's a little shaky. It's like a, you know, a $300,000 pay cut. You can feel that a little bit in your daily life. You yeah. Know? You're like, yeah. ooh, ow. <laughs> yeah. So, especially yeah. if you're used to spending, I don't yes. know what your spending habits were, but that's where it gets really fucking vicious. Yeah. They were, they weren't good, but they weren't bad. Yeah. That's good. Like, yeah. Probably. And you can make it much. quick. Yeah. Pull you, it back. Yeah. Pull breathe back the in. Little, you yep. know, mm -hmm. like that's my lunch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little air. Yeah. yeah saved, delicious. saved 20 bucks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, it, so it, it was like a little bit of a confidence shake. But And then also, in these areas, in these spaces, there's a lot of people saying how you should do it, right? So if you're a new videographer or if you're getting into podcasting or content and you listen – Gary Vee says to do it one way and so-and-so says to do it one way. And they have a lot of similarities, but when you get down to these nuances, right, like Mitch's cake is Mitch's cake. And like a, a good coach that Mitch is, he's going to tell people how to make their own cake, not tell people they should make his cake. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was getting at earlier is like, how much have you defended this, right? Like, I, it doesn't sound like you have. That's just your confidence level. You're like, this is what I'm fucking doing. Yep. Don't give a shit. <clears throat> Whereas me, I, I, I catch myself second guessing sometimes, you know, even me with my background and military stuff and the stuff I've told you about. I still find myself second guessing in this space. And I let a lot of clients, <clears throat> we haven't stuck to our guns as much. I haven't needed to because I was making money doing sales, but now this is the only income. Yep. We find ourselves in this conundrum, yes. right? And, and I that, think- 
I know exactly what yes. you're getting at, and I have the solution to your problem. You do. But so, keep talking, please. No, let's talk about it. This, this is why I wanted to talk about it on this particular podcast, is because a young entrepreneur like you, it's very rare to see someone stick to their guns like this, dude. I honestly think you would be a gunslinger. I'd think that. I'd do it. You look like one, dude. Like you, the young kid that everybody underestimates walking into the saloon. Yeah, I can see it now. You're going to get a mouthful of Mitch. And then me, I I just, with this beard, I just got off, you know, the frontier prospecting. And I'm like, who's this young boy? You got the fucking yeah, I'm just spitting. toothpick fucking yeah. in the spittoon. And then we see some shiny little nickel-plated pistols on your hip. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then we look at the wanted poster on the wall. And I'm like, it's this guy. <laughs> It's him. <laughs> that's, that's that's Mitch Cassidy, <laughs> the Sundance Kid. But anyway, that's uh, it's 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 really awesome that you're doing this. So let's keep unpacking it, though. You've been so you're talking about comparing. Like you don't you probably compare yourself to other people, but you've been pushing that out. What kind of steps or methods do you take to like do that while you're still active on social media? <clears throat> Just get on and post and get off. Engage with- Just get on, get off. Yeah. Get on, get off. Post, engage with my people if there's any comments and uh, message people, whatever. Like that's kind of where I spend my time on social media. Try my best to fucking get off of the homepage. If mm. I'm on a explore page or, or real page, it's because I'm looking for sounds or trending audios or whatever that I can use for. So yeah. like it's a more of like a research- I kind of like, ooh, I fuck with that sound. Save it, save it, save it, save it. So I could just have some good sounds when I want to post. Um, but you were on there with intention, though, is the point. Yeah, but it's it's easily able to get distracted. You just start getting on there and you start scrolling and consuming. And then you're like, fuck, where did that time go? Yeah. So it, you got to be really intentional and you got to like check yourself like, nope, get off. Or yes. do this, do that. Like you got to stay stern with yourself. Um but yeah, as far as social media goes and like trying to eliminate the consuming, it's getting on there, posting what I need to, engaging with the people I need to, and then get off because- Eliminate the consumption. <clears throat> and I don't do TikTok. <clears throat> I don't do- God, sorry for all the- Oh, you're good. Clear in my throat. <clears> throat> um, Me too, dude. I, but uh, yeah, I don't do, I don't do uh, TikTok, which I probably should. Right. Actually, no, I should. Not probably, I should. Yeah. Um, but right now, it's just not something that I need to like double up my time on because I don't feel like the return is super huge right Let's now. Let's walk it back. You will. <clears throat> huh? Let's walk it back even further. You will. You will. But yeah, and I, I just when understand the right. that the, the stuff and content that I post on Instagram is not super tailored to TikTok mm -hmm. um, and what that could do. So like, like one of my social media managers is like, Mitch, you, I was thinking about it the other day, like you crack me up she's like you are so fucking funny but she's like you just need to figure out how to bottle that up and post stuff Actually, about it right and i was like oh that's a good idea you know and i, you I will like be that on tiktok did you know that i will be with the authentic identity podcast oh hell yeah yeah we're on tiktok sweet and so when your episodes drop and them clips get clipped you'll be up there sweet yeah but yeah like that kind of stuff you never know um but yeah it's just another channel so that's why tiktok is great is it can hit different you know, um, algorithms and yeah. hit different people and you never know who you can find. But like Instagram's kind of like my credibility. It's like a place. business card. Yeah. Really. Yeah, it is. That's people I can started viewing Instagram as a business card, a secondary website. Same yeah, thing. Exactly. Yep. It's uh, and, and that's why it's really important. And that's, we actually need your help. So we're, hopefully we can partner up. We're, we're in the works right now with you, but uh, there's something there for us to partner up on with distribution and then social media strategy where we, we can, we can distribute massive amounts of content, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're already doing. Yeah. But if it's not intentionally focused, like some platforms are better that for that though, like a TikTok is like just a vertical video all day, every yep. day, right? Like, yep. but then you get into Instagram and you really have to be intentional with your brand, right? Cause that's something you're very protective of too. You're like, hey, I, I don't want to be like a talking head every day on Correct. Instagram. Correct. So you have a really healthy posting variety, I think, mm -hmm. which is commendable. But um, yeah, so you, you've kind of defended 
this mindset, that's something you do with social media. You're on, you're off. And if you're on, you're like with intention. But occasionally, because we're human, you, when, when you do slip up and you're like, man, it's been a half an hour and I'm just scrolling. Like what's something you do, any methods that you could share with the audience of how you pull yourself out of that? Or if you're feeling like, man, I, I just compared myself to this awesome videographer that you look up to or this other page that you found. You got to yeah. fucking wake up and like just – figure out how to like read your body or listen to your body like if you feel like you're in your fucking body your emotions that you feel any sort of like negative way you probably are starting to compare yourself to a situation or i wish i should be doing this or i should look like this or i need to get back into doing this or you know like yeah. all those things like you got to be able to watch yourself from like an outside perspective and like, that's the best way for me to like catch myself is I'll just be like, Ooh, I felt an off emotion. Was that, you know? And then I can basically be like, Oh, that was why I got to pull out or, you know, whatever that is. Dude, that's really good. So you just got to be very, very, very self-aware and like very analytical of yourself. And like, that's the best way that I've been able to catch myself in those moments is, is yeah. things like that. So how did, how did you develop that skill? Mm. Cause that's a skill. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I've had just experience like i don't know just like those emotions like i i i haven't really gotten clear on it until i started reading some of the books uh like the art of allowing by esther and jerry hicks that one um really helps allowing. to like paint it it's it has a bunch to do with all the manifestation va exactly what you said vibration the um authentic vibration like it has all to do with that kind of stuff but basically yeah. it's like i try to read that or put that in my ears every day if i can because it needs to be kind of like my bible because i i know and believe those concepts so true to my life that i just need them in my life every day to get reminded and become a second nature like right. how i can catch myself in the middle of scrolling and be like you got to get off instead of just mindlessly doing it um so that's that book has really made it and burned it in a lot more for me yeah. um, because it made it like I was naturally just doing it. Like I felt those emotions, but I wasn't sure how to like articulate them or what to do with them um, until I found like that book. And then I was like, oh, that makes more sense, you know. Dude. And so a lot of the things that I do and have done in my life have been a lot of some of these principles in these books. Right. But I just didn't know about them yet. And then when I brought them or when they got brought to my attention, which is another thing, I wanted a solution to why did I feel that way? Well, I want I want the the opposite of that, right? Mm -hmm. I want to feel better when I'm scrolling on social media or I just want to feel better in general. Well, what can we do to, you know, get that? And I, I start raising my vibrational frequency to what I want, which is solving that problem. I don't want to feel like this when I'm scrolling on social media. So I think about how awesome I'm doing outside of you know, social media or why this is good. Like just basically focus on the things that are doing good in your uh, right. life and you raise your vibrational frequency. You figure out what you want, meaning I want good feelings and emotions. I want joy. I don't want to get consumed by social media. And then naturally things will fall into your lap like that book did because it's what I wanted. And then I found the book and then I consumed the book and the information solved my problem. So it's like, it's really fucking weird when you just yeah. figure out what you want. And that's the hardest part for people. They just don't know what they want. And then they can just sit there and, you know, wow, well, this is what's wrong. And this is where my, but again, that's what's wrong. That's a focus. You're focusing on what's wrong and you're going to get more wrong. Yeah. And if you, you got to, again, look at it from an outsider perspective, which that book has an amazing way of telling it and putting it into perspective for me. Um, and so like all my coaching people that I coach, I always am like, start here. This yeah. is, I can already tell your mindset skewed. So you need to read this to like, get your mind right real quick and understand what I'm saying when, you know, like they explain it better than me, yeah. but I kind of put the principles into like real life. Um, so anyways, that's, that's a grit or a way that I've been able to catch myself in the middle of, that's uh, a great tool. And Did scrolling you, in social media. You just gave the audience like a, an un-me, dude. Like that's a nugget of gold. Like, you know how I mentioned I was the prospector in that saloon? Like mm -hmm. I didn't even find that gold. <laughs> you did. I just walked in. Dude, that's a great book. I wrote that book down. That's not a common book you hear. The Art of Allowing has yeah. to do with manifestation. So There's a couple different ones yeah. too. Like I'm reading one now. It's the same authors, but it's uh, Money 
and the power, no, uh, money and the power of deliberate intent or money and the law of attraction, I think it's called okay, money, money and, and the law, law of, of attraction. attraction. Yeah. I've heard that one float around. Um, but same, same principles, but again, mm. it's just like something I got to constantly just burn into my head to where it's like yeah. secondary, like, or just, I react the way I need to, instead of having to be so intentional and conscious about it. Absolutely. Like it'll just be me, <clears throat> which is what I want. Cause I know. Self. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, so this is, we'll have to do a whole episode practice. on this, on this Friday when we record authentic identity. Like I'm going to write that down. I think we should talk about that book. Cause that, that's the whole point of that other podcast that we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, are they merging yep. these podcasts? They yep. are. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, there's so many similarities. Cause like the whole point of that podcast is that if you find your authentic self, all of a sudden the universe is giving you what you're here to do. Like Correct. What, uh, what resonates with you. Yep. Um, and so that, I think that's it for a lot of people is the one thing we can learn from Mitch Rose is everything that you do, the business you built is because it just resonates with you. And this is me kind of speculating. You can tell me if I'm right here, but the ability that you have to understand what jives with you is your superpower that like tells people how it's going to be that equals your skills and the visuals that you offer. It's everything. It's the core of your business is that it probably comes very natural and easy to you. Like it's a lot of work, right? You have a whole day of editing today, you were saying, mm -hmm. but like, it doesn't feel like burdensome because you're in control. It's aligned with you. And like, you're kind of at the wheel of this bus, right? So yep. does, That's, it, does that, it feel like hard work or does it just feel like? No, well, back to perception, it did feel like hard work at one point, but then I switched the narrative of why do I think I need to work hard in order to get money? That's a fucking narrative that I'm believing, which is not true. A lot of Americans. A lot of Americans think you actually have to put more output in order to get more income, which is not true. It's 100% not true. I mean, like maybe in a certain job, right? If I if I want more sales, like I should probably, in it, you know, talk to more people. Yeah. So To an but, extent, but also, again, going back to what's your closing ratio, yeah. what if you technically did the same amount of things, but your confidence better. and conviction and process became so much better to where you just did the same amount of work, but you just made more money, a 50% close more. ratio instead of a 10, you know, yeah. or yeah, charge more. Anyway. But in, in the business sense, you know, even a construction worker, you know, I don't think, <laughs> yeah, is it... even in a construction worker, they, they think they need to work more hours because that's what the company has painted that picture for them, for them. Yeah. If they're okay with that, they can believe into that and play that hard work all fucking day. But good if you want to allow for more in your life, if you want to work and uh, like if that if you like doing hard manual labor, keep doing it. But what else can you do to make it more profitable, to make more money, yeah. whatever, right? Like you got to do what you're passionate about, but I don't believe that you need to necessarily put more output in order to get more income. Like that's, I, I don't believe it, especially in my, my field, but even for a construction worker, it's like, what if you just became a new, you're, you're, you're your own subcontractor and yeah. now you just do framing on the side and you just go allow for those people and make those connections and right. Like that's yeah. how that can work. Um, but in the business sense, like where I'm at, it's more of like, how can I, allow for more of those opportunities to come relationships to come. Like I, I, I wanted more content. I called you and what happened? You said, Oh, that's great, Mitch. I have a podcast that I need another co-host on. Do you want to join? Yeah. You answered what I wanted. Right. Because I put that out there. That's how powerful it is. Like why, how did I know to fucking call you at that time? And that yeah. that was the perfect timing. And like you the know? two dudes, you know, that in your professional career with like JKR, Right. And around Jefferson, the two dudes you jive the most with are just happen to, they just happen to start a podcast like two weeks prior to your phone call. Mm -hmm. And we're like, dude, I'm like, Hey, Jared, you think Mitch would be a good third host? And he's like, fucking yeah, absolutely. Like it was just perfect. But that's, that's your superpower, dude, is that I've never met anybody, um, old or young, that's this in tune with what resonates with them. It's, you'll do the hard work needed. That's not the issue. But your superpower is finding the connections that are just going to enrich you. Yeah. Jefferson, Jim <clears throat> Quick, Jimmy Quick, Jim Quick, basically. Uh, He's pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
he Jimmy, Jefferson but... went to some that big old event kickoff in uh in uh, Salt Lake where basically every speaker was there everybody right. and everybody right. and he said hey do you mind taking this test it was like a quick brain thing <clears throat> I don't even know personality kind personality of thing. test, and it came back that I'm a the elephant, the collaborative connector. Element Ooh. elephants are known for their strong bonds, cooperate and cooperative uh, nature. People with an elephant brain type are excellent at building relationships, fostering teamwork, and promoting collaboration. They have strong communication skills. So this is what my test came back as, and so that's dope. Hearing that, it made it more clear to me <laughs> that man, that is my superpower. I'm a connector. And I, I, before I even saw that or took that test, I was like, I feel like I'm a fucking super connector. All my friend groups and friends who are now best friends and friends who are connect, like I connected all of them. Yeah. If it wasn't for me, like, again, I don't want to say it like that, like a fucking douche, but truly I've yeah. noticed a lot of really thriving relationships start because of me. Like I know you and Ryan are going to have a solid relationship because I connected us. Oh dude, we've already, you know? it's already but it's begun. and not saying it was, it's my relationship and you can't have it. Like, not like that. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I've done my, my responsibility is to help connect people to people who, uh, who they need. Right. Can and, you imagine me and Ryan calling you and be like, Hey, can we go to a, can we go hang out? Like, is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you're not going to get mad, are you? Yeah. <laughs> hey, can we go to this? Can we go to a lagoon tomorrow? Yeah. Thanks. No, but that that same concept yeah. though, like I, I truly have told myself, I'm like, I feel like you're a super connector. I don't know where I've, or I think it was uh, with Jefferson. Um, maybe it was one of his coaching. They, they had mentioned that term super connector. Um, <clears throat> who's the fucking Tennessee guy? What's his name? You know, oh, Coach Burt. Coach Burt. I think yeah. it was Coach Burt that I, that Burt. stuck with me that that word. But I'm like, man, I feel like I've connected so many people and built so many relationships amongst the people I knew. And that's you awesome. Know? But and then I, that I took that test and I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. It's like, so I'm like, funny how like a test like that, uh, like on the on our next podcast we do with authentic identity, we're going to do your human design, correct? Yeah. And I think you're going to be a projector. But uh, there's five archetypes there. Changed my life like that shit. I've talked yeah. about it. but <clears throat> And uh, Ryan, too, he was talking about it. Yep. No, but, I'm excited to hear that. And just, yeah, again, it just helps you. And again, once you took that test, now you believe in that and those things that it said about you. And then yeah. you're like, these are things that are about me that are true. And then you believe right. in that narrative. And then you act upon those narratives to make it feel more aligned. Yeah. Like you took that test and then you never really thought about it. Mm. But now that you have the concepts to describe you, you're like, oh, yeah, I am that. And so I act in this way. And it then gives I get you permission in a way. You're yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Like sometimes the human brain just needs permission. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I agree. it's, it's, yeah. And from your, from yourself as well. Like, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, that's crucial stuff, man. You've given us some nuggets. Uh, and this is all to tie it back into like social media and content creation. Um, then there's the cue. My dog needs to get out, but, uh, to tie back into that dude, it's like the authentic people, the people that are in most in line with themselves in the social media content creation spaces, the processes feel easy They're time consuming. They're tedious, but like, it doesn't feel like a burden. So what's funny is over the summer, when I've committed here fully blue form media, now this is our only duck in the oven. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we felt out of alignment, or at least I did, uh, Malice can talk about that too later, but basically in August is when we said, we're not doing the content that we preach. And it's like, I'm, I'm going to stop saying tomorrow and I'm like, we're just going to start recording. And so this podcast was born and then now mm -hmm. we're, so it's just like, we have to be doing this. And now I feel more in tune with the content and the direction I want to go. And the same conclusions you've come to earlier with sticking to your guns, we're now all of a sudden the fog is clearing off of yeah, this just yep, in the last good. couple of weeks. Good. So your input has been extremely valuable, my Thanks, friend. Thanks, dude. And uh, yeah, the way is clear for us now. And and Mal and I, we're working as a team, which throws in another dynamic too, right? If you have uh, a spouse and you're doing business with your spouse, it forces you guys to like come to... Like you gotta, you gotta solve your shit quicker. Otherwise your business is going to fail. Mm -hmm. That's right. We can't take 10 years to like understand each other. It's like, we have to do this now because mm 
you know, our livelihood is on the line. And so we're getting like four years or I don't know the metric, but a, a number of years worth of like understanding like a normal relationship yeah. would go. Yeah, you put that on the Bunsen burner of yeah, having your own business, yeah. and now we're we're unpacking that like every Quick. week is like That's a year's so worth of stuff. And so cool. Yeah, so we're growing like crazy, and then we've learned to communicate and just get rid of our emotions. But the the way is becoming clearer and clearer. And you've been like the one of the best examples in the social media space that I know of that's got this clear cut route. Like it just looks like you know what you're doing all the time, mm-hmm. even Thanks, if you man. might not think it. That's what it appears like. So, um, any other ending thoughts here you can give us? Um, we didn't get much into your processes of video editing or stuff like that. Um, but I think you gave us even more valuable stuff, dude. Thanks bro. Yeah. Um, so from Mitch, just to recap, and then I'll leave you with one final, you can, you can hit us with a thought, but talking about comparing yourself methods that talk about getting, getting in and out of social media without the emotional you know, bludgeoning of, of inadequacies of being compared, right. How to come in there with intention. And then also the art of allowing yourself to do your true thing. So you're resonating with what's actually happening to you. You're basically pulling in the energies and the connections that you want. Uh, that could be applied to any business. Yep. So that's fucking valuable. Thanks dude. But, uh, one last thing, social media. What's been like the most impactful thing in your business regarding social media content? Like, was it a certain video, a certain method, a certain branding? Is it the mustache? Like, who knows? Like, what's the most impactful thing in all of your social media content that's brought you business? Um, Starting out, which is probably where a lot of people are at if they're listening about social media, is one non-negotiable when i first started i was like okay dude you gotta post you gotta get out there you gotta you know and uh my goal was two pictures then a video two pictures or no was it reverse yeah two pictures and a video two pictures and a video because i was like was this just instagram just instagram because right. my thing was well i could take fucking pictures all day and post those those are easy but you got to get out and practice because i was still learning my craft i was like i gotta get better i gotta make videos and make you know get better at this yeah. and so my non-negotiable was post twice and then you can't post again until you make a video so you better get on it so i'd post twice post a video post twice post a video post twice pictures and then a video and right. so that that little format was like my you're not allowed to post but you fucking have to so go out and make a video um and so that alone set me on the path to like what I think that was like the foundation of where it all started uh, with for just me. your Instagram page, yeah. Right? And then like through that, <clears throat> over it's been four or five years now. I'm getting messages, DMs, people wanting to work with me. Yeah. So like that's and it's the consistency. It takes social media as a slow burn. People need to understand that, but it could take could take a month, it could take a year, it could take. It just depends on how much you're active. You know, what, what are you doing to build relationships outside of social media, getting people to follow you, talking to everybody you can, like it takes energy, it takes energy. Yeah. It, it does take work. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you do have to just stay consistent, post a lot. Um, that's, and just, that's super huge. Dude. Yeah. And, and again, like mine, mine is interesting because I built a multiple six figure business without actually posting like a lot of my work. Like I just post like my, my life, my entertainment stuff, what I'm doing behind the scenes. Like I, and again, like I try to say this, like my website is shit. My, my, uh, email is Mitchell Rose, one, two, three, four, five at gmail.com. Hit me up. Um, (laughs) but it's like, it's so, when you go, going back to the beginning where you said professional, it's like, I am the staple of showing you, like, you don't need to be crazy professional in those areas, but you you just need to have solid I do actually. <laughs> yeah, when you wear when you record, do you wear ties and slacks? No, and, not not yeah. fucking ties. And but I I wear a a nice Lululemon Lululemon <laughs> mimic from uh, Walmart. They're called the what are those fucking pants called? I don't even remember. You're not wearing, relevant, but they're comfy. Pants? No, no, they're like a they feel like a Lulu kind of like a loose like a short, fitting. Yeah. I guess it is possibly slacks but not like as harsh feeling yeah it's but not anyways, a dress slack though that's my fucking plug to walmart right now 
yeah. 20 bucks. I went over there, bought five pairs of pants and they're not so the best quality, but <laughs> you're saying, <laughs> so, that's good. we went yeah. off. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. So you're saying, yeah, your people's perception of professional. Yeah. That doesn't uh, really matter. It doesn't. And I mean, it can help and it's like a credibility thing. But again, going back to like, I believe in what I fucking do to where like when somebody hits me up, they, regardless of where they found me, like I have a belief, a level of conviction and belief in myself that they're going to hear it over the phone to where that's all they need to fucking hear. Like they don't, right. they're not like, well, let me see you. Let me see your work. Well, let me see. You. And I'm like, it's not see my work. Go look. Huh. Yeah. Like, do you know who I am? Yeah. That's kind of the mentality, not like a dick, but you do have to have that. Like my shit don't stinks, dude. I've been around the fucking bush, been a bush, the yeah. block. <laughs> You've probably been, I mean, there's probably a couple bushes, bushes, on bushes block. and block. Yeah. Um, but like, I've been there, I've done that. I know what I'm doing. Like, it's almost like, do you need my help or not? Like, I'm just kind of reaching out to see if you need help or you're reaching out to me because you think you need help. Yeah. So it's like an organic, it's yeah. happening organically because you're not really like actively prospecting. I am sometimes yeah. when I, whenever I feel a little slow, mm. which is rare, but okay. if I have a second of time, like even driving between appointments, which don't do this, uh, f for people who are into safe driving, no, you weren't driving. You have a driver, remember? A driver, correct? Yeah. And then the limo, driver. the big limo, and the, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, Motorcade. Yep. Mm -hmm. When I'm like bored or yeah. have a second to spare, I'm driving between jobs. Whatever, I'll go into Zillow, find shitty home, call the agent, make a contact. Hey, man, I saw you didn't have any uh, professional photos taken. I'm not sure what the situation is on the house, but you know, do you currently work with a photographer in St. George, or what? What's kind of your your sure. situation? How oh, often yeah. do you do that? Try to like weekly, weekly, weekly. I mean, yeah. again, how many contacts? I don't have a set thing because yeah. again, my my calendar's fucking full. Like, I have my my second shooter. She's shooting probably. Actually, I'll have probably ten ten home shot this week. That'll be you know three nice plus grand in work that yeah. I didn't really. That your I team's didn't. Doing. I didn't do. Yeah, my team's doing. That's awesome. Um, but like I I do not have time to do them to this week, and I'm like, well, fuck. Again, going back to you need to be available for agents. They need shit now. You know, one agent was booked for next Thursday and she called me today and said, I thought it was tomorrow, Thursday. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't have that, but I can send one of my shooters. And she, she's like, well, is they, are they good? I'm like, of course they are. I trained they them. I said, I wouldn't send them out. And I have a, <clears throat> you know, 100% satisfaction guarantee. We're going to fucking make it right if something's not right. So don't worry yeah. about it. We'll get it done. Cool. We'll see you at 930. You know, so you've duplicated yourself, duplicated basically. myself. Yeah. That's but awesome. I, I, whenever I have a spare moment, now that I know that I have a team that can go fulfill, I'm like, oh yeah, let me go get more. Cause I want to pump as much work I can to them and make them more money right, too. Right. That's a goal of mine is so to just keep my sprinkling in some prospecting. Yeah. Sprinkling. But you're not like, most of them are just actively. like it's word of mouth though. or yeah. through social media or they call me from a referral or something. That's so cool, man. Cause that, that's like a vibrational thing, you know, word of mouth. People say that that's just people who have, you have people's attention yeah. enough for them to talk about you and pass the word on to you yeah. as well. So it's, it's super cool, dude. It's like your superpower. We, we unpack that a little bit, but I think you've left us with some good nuggets, man. How do you feel about it? I feel great, dude. That's probably one of my any, favorite podcasts. Any, any saved rounds left in the chamber you want to pop off? Let me think. Uh, Butch Cassidy. Know, man. I think we covered quite a bit, but yeah, we did, and we'll we'll cover more, man, because we'll we got we got partnerships in the future. We we're jiving, mm -hmm. we're we're rolling, Amen. and it, it feels real organic too, right? In that space, just the way we we jive on camera and stuff, and doing, yep. you know, and we're out there kissing babies, and shaking hands, and cutting mm -hmm. ribbons, mm -hmm. <laughs> limos, motorcades. Uh -huh. Yeah, it feels good. So, uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. If you made it this far, this is Mitch Rose. If you need real estate um, footage, if you need your the real estate you're trying to sell, make it look as good as possible, hit Mitch Rose up. If you need a cool video, uh, hit him up. If you need, what else do they, you know? If you need Everything. a tablespoon of salt, he'll he'll lend it to you. Yep. You know, if you need a, a stick of butter, there's some in his fridge. Mm -hmm. Come so, on down. Come on down. <laughs> Right on, dude. Well, uh, that's it for uh, your content factory. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, boom. Boom. Boom.